Welcome! In this video, I'll show you how to solve problem 8.3 as it appears in the third edition of Griffith's Introduction to Quantum Mechanics. This problem basically asks us to determine the transmission coefficient using the previous results that we found, which are these right here, for the case where we have a finite square barrier of height v0. So we have, let's say, at 0, right? We can always shift our axis, so that's fine. We have this finite square barrier um, of width 2a, right? Um, that is our problem. So this is, of course, the potential, and this is x. So this is what we have, and we wish to find, of course, the, the transmission coefficient for a, for a particle of energy e, and then compare the exact result that we found in problem 2.32, and we have to consider that we are in the WKB regime. So our transmission coefficient has to be very small. That is, that is a condition for the WKB approximation um, to actually work. And we are going to see that in a moment. So let's just do this. How can we solve this problem? Well, the WKB approximation is somewhat difficult to derive, but very easy to apply. All we need to do is calculate this integral. And of course, then plug it in here. And that is it. That's everything. So let's just go for it. What is the momentum? The momentum is square root of 2m. Now consider we are in the region where the potential is greater than the energy. So of course, we are in the region where we have to use the potential minus the energy, right? Um, we basically factor out a minus sign, but since we this is the absolute value, right? Um, we don't have to worry about anything. So what is our potential? Well, our potential here is zero, our potential here is zero, and it's V0 in here. And our gamma, this thing, is only for the WKB region, so this region where there is a potential. We don't need the WKB approximation outside, here or here. So this is going to be 2m V0 minus e, and of course inside of the square root. Now, Let's plug this into our gamma. This is going to be pretty simple, right? 1 over h bar. Now we integrate from 0 to 2a. Keep in mind, we have the freedom to choose um, where we set this up, where, where, where we choose our endpoints. And this is the integral of the absolute value of the momentum. So integral of square root of 2m v0 minus e. However, um, this thing doesn't depend on x at all. So integrating this is trivial. It's simply 2a times that. So we get 2a, then 2m, v0 minus e, and this thing divided by h bar. All right, so this is our gamma. Now, this is what we now plug into t. So t is approximately, of course, e to the minus two times this. So minus four times a square root of 2m v0 minus e over h bar. And that is our coefficient transmission according to the WKB approximation. However, is this correct? That is the question. Well, let's compare with the result that we found previously. So what we had found is that the transmission coefficient, now this is the exact form, right? This is 1 over 1 plus v0 squared for e v0 minus e times the hyperbolic sine squared of gamma. Okay, so that is the result. And well, what, how, how do we compare these things, right? It, it isn't immediate. We can't just look at them and say, oh yeah, they are equivalent or oh, no, they aren't. So we need to manipulate this expression a little bit. Now let's apply that gamma right here is very large. Why very large? Because we know that this expression is very small, right? It's very, very small. And for this to be very small, we need the exponent, right? this part of the exponent without the minus sign, we need that to be very large. So basically, gamma is very large. All right, and what is the, the hyperbolic sign? The hyperbolic sign is e to the x minus e to the minus x 
divided by 2. But since gamma, right, so we're going to now maybe write this in terms of gamma, of course, so the hyperbolic sine of gamma, and let's just change x to gamma. So in the case of gamma, if gamma is very large, then this number is very close to zero, and this number is very large. So for that reason, we can approximate the hyperbolic sign in this case, where gamma is very large, as simply this. And of course, since it is squared, we square it. So we get e to the 2 gamma over 4. Okay, now um, we, we still can't really compare it too much. At least we have this comparison of e to the 2 gamma, but uh, it's kind of hard. So what we could do is multiply and divide by 1 over this, so that this cancels out and we get 1, right? Then we'll have something here, which will be very small because it's going to be multiplied by e to the minus 2 gamma. So I'm going to show you. Um, so we need, so 4 times 4 is 16. So we get 16 e v0 minus e times e to the minus 2 gamma divided by v0 squared divided by the same thing, right? 16 e v0 minus e e to the minus 2 gamma over v0 squared. And again, why do I choose this? Because when I multiply, I know that this part, right, all of this will cancel out and it will, it will give me a 1. And I will have 1 plus something very small, right? 0.0, .0 who knows how many zeros. Um, so that will be basically 1 and I will be left with an expression only in the numerator, okay? I'll show you it anyway uh, right now, but I just want you to guys have an intuition um, about why I'm doing it like this. So in the numerator, I get this. So 16 e v0 minus e, e to the minus 2 gamma over v0 squared. And in the, the num denominator here, I get 16 e v0 minus e, e to the minus 2 gamma over v0 squared. And what else? Then we have plus 1. And again, this thing right here is very, very, very small. And this thing isn't particularly big, right? We have an energy that is greater than the potential. Uh, so, sorry, it's actually the other way around. The potential is greater than the energy, but it isn't that much of a big difference, right? It's not going to be a factor of a hundred or a thousand or anything like that. So this, there's no way that um, this exponential doesn't dominate. So for that reason, this is basically one and we don't need to write something divided by one, right? It's, it's not necessary. So what we end up with is something that, as we mentioned, isn't particularly large. The exact value will depend on what V0 is, of course, and what the energy is, but that value isn't particularly large. And then we have this e to the minus 2 gamma, right? So first of all, we confirm um, basically our result here. Right? This is approximately, or it goes as e to the minus 2 gamma. And that is um, right, exactly what we have right here. And it's important that we have um, shown it, right? This result, t, as we saw, the transmission coefficient for the WKB approximation, as we had said before, goes as e to the minus 2 gamma, and the factor in front isn't particularly relevant, right? In fact, this is about, oh, this is of order 1, probably. Um, depends exactly, right, on the values of e and v0, but it's going to be around of order 1. These two things will be roughly same magnitude. Um, this and this will cancel out partially, same here. So this is not going to be particularly large, right? So my point is that, as we had seen in the, a few previous videos, when we derived this, um, the transmission coefficient for WKB does go as this, so the approximation that we used is valid. Again, as long as gamma is very large, which means that the transmission coefficient is very small. Otherwise, this entire approximation doesn't work. Okay, so that's everything for this problem. It was a rather quick one. Um, I hope that this was useful to you. If it was, you know, please consider leaving a like on the video, commenting and subscribing, and maybe checking out my Patreon. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.